Hello, thank you for attending. This is a very important topic, as always, a very timely, and everybody wants to know what's going on. This is a big news all over the place. Uh, we can talk about the uh, uh, the mortgage, the Federal Reserve, the interest rate, and the economy, and all in the whole nine yards. My name is Siwin Yi from the Year Listen Network, and thank you for attending, Mr. Richard Advani from Supreme Lending who is a, uh, one of the leading mortgage loan consultant in the country. Uh, Richard service not only owner-occupied loans, he also helped investors to, uh, to finance uh, their properties all over the past, uh, over the 50 sticks in the past decade and has helped thousands of real estate investors to use the best financing strategies based on whatever challenging times uh, that uh, are going on out there, and so he uh, he's not only a loan consultant; he's a uh, he is a uh, almost like an advisor, if you will. <laughs> uh, so anyway, without further ado, Richard, thank you for attending. I know you're very very busy doing always doing loans and helping clients every single second of every day. Thank you so much. So without further ado, the, the big news not only happened yesterday; the big news happened as recent as a month ago uh, during the Fed, Federal Reserve meeting at Jackson Hole, Wyoming, with the Jerome Powell, uh, he, he made a, a very, very big speech at that time. And then yesterday, everybody knew that he, uh, uh, Jerome Powell, uh, the chairman of the Federal Reserve, going to do another rate hike, and which he did that, which is he increased the rate to 0.75 basis point, which is very significant. So uh, I know, since you are in your business of lending, so you understand this is your job. You cover this type of uh, uh, economic uh, uh, you know, uh, information. So please share the audience from your perspective. So what what is going on? Is that is that a concern? How to how could home buyers and investors can overcome this interest rate environment? Is it is this interest rate if it goes beyond seven percent? Is it going to crash the housing market? So, uh, so please uh, share your thoughts. I'm sure you have some very very important thoughts. So with that in mind, uh, the floor is all yours and and take it away, Richard. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Si Wing. And you know, no, I don't think rates pushing up a uh, you know another quarter half percent from now will crash the housing market. However. We are in uncharted territory. Um, you know, inflation is rampant, as we all know, probably largely in point to all those stimmies everyone was so excited about getting, right? When we print money, it causes inflation. So um, it's not a surprise we're here. However, uh, the Fed chairman's made it very clear that, and almost in his words, that the pain will continue, right? Unemployment's great. There's still a lot of demand for goods and services. And if you guys listen to it, he effectively wants to reduce that demand, right? The economy needs to almost turn a little to combat inflation. And one way to do that is to keep hiking interest rates. And uh, there's no question about it. All of us are, of course, feeling the impact of that. Um, you know, traditionally, mortgage rates don't move directly with the Fed rate. In fact, uh, earlier middle to the middle of this year, when they started doing the increases, Treasury bought that down quite a bit. And for those of you that aren't aware, the mortgage rates are loosely tied to the 10-year Treasury bond. Um, what we saw today is the 10-year Treasury bond spiked dramatically already. I think it's up 4 or 5% today with the Fed increase, which puts the 10-year Treasury bond I think pretty much almost like a 14 or 15 year high, right? And along with that, rates are at the highest point that they've been as well. Um, so back to your question, of course, is, you know, is are these higher rates going to crash the housing market? Um, you know, my opinion, as well as most of the economists, if you stay up uh, reading, you know, the news is it's not. Um, you know, it is going to bring the housing market and is bringing, as we speak, the housing market to um, probably a healthier place between supply, demand, listing prices on them as well, right? It was, you know, people were essentially just putting higher and higher prices, you know, every couple months uh, based on, you know, the appreciation that was happening in the market. And as we all know, you know, when you were trying to buy a property, there would be bidding wars. And it would push the prices way higher than even asking. And we're not seeing that happen anymore. Um, you know, but it is important to note that 
It, look, I read pretty much every real estate article. I know C Wing does too because he sends me a lot of them also. But <laughs> anything that comes through the media, CNBC, CNN, whatever, you know, we're reading it in. I think it's really, really misleading uh, the headlines that they're putting out versus the context of the articles. Because, you know, every day I'm reading articles saying, you know, house prices dropping, demand for house prices dropping in bold. And then you read the article and 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 you see that, you know, house prices have gone up 5.6% since last year. However, it's projected to go up 14%, right? So they haven't gone down yet, right? It's leveling um, and it's not gone up as high as they expected. But from last year to this year, even in California, prices have gone up 5.6%. Now across the country, they've gone up 20%. Um, Zillow just released an index as well, kind of, projecting their home values for the next 12 months. And they lowered their forecast, understandably, based on what's happening. But what was interesting was most of the places that had a projected decline were California, New York, you know, the coasts. Um, and and But even so, that decline was, you know, 1% to 2% in most of those areas, right? So is that a crash? No, you know, it's it's a leveling, it's it's a reduction. Um, but what I found even more interesting was the majority of the markets that we all invest in were going up between 1% and 4%, right? Places in Florida and Ohio and even random places. I think they pulled the top 100 metro, you know, markets. And the bulk of the country was still going to experience nominal appreciation, and uh, to me, obviously, that was a good sign. And, and obviously, it made sense, right? Because regardless of rates and everything else, one thing that's not changing is uh, the housing shortage. And people are like, oh, well, you know, people aren't buying. And OK, well, housing shortage is a housing shortage. It's about roof over your head. So whether people are buying or renting, they still need somewhere to live, right? And I think what we've seen is as people have decided they don't want to buy anymore, uh, they're all going and renting and there's rental bidding wars are other headlines that you will see. Right. And the amazing thing for us is landlords is the quality of tenant that we're experiencing is like, we've never experienced before. Right. Mid to high 700 credit scores, uh, money in the bank, good incomes. I mean, people could buy a house now um, technically, but they've decided to sit on the sideline for, for whatever their reasons are. Um so, you know, that also begs the question, is it still a good time to buy rental real estate? I still am. Um, I think we're in a very unique situation in the economy where, uh, you know, right away we think, OK, let's let's be conservative. Right. Let's let's wait, see how things play out um, and let's keep some liquidity. Well, cash in the bank right now is losing 10 to 20 percent with inflation. So, you know, personally, I'd take a one to two percent. Um, return on a rental property is a hedge against inflation. Uh, but also keep in mind that, you know, real estate for all of us that actually do it, know it's a long-term game, right? Even the days where we were making seven to 8% cash on cash returns, what did that really mean for you, right? What, 160 bucks a month, 200 bucks a month, um, was that a dinner for most of us? Well, man, these days, it's going grocery shopping for two days worth of groceries, right? 200 bucks doesn't get you very far. And I think once we realize that as an investor, are we really investing for that ROI, for that 200 bucks a month? No, we're not, right? We're not investing for that. We're investing for the long-term wealth building aspect of real estate. And that hasn't changed. And, you know, I, I think probably two months ago, uh, you presented, you know, the Case Shiller Index, which basically showed the relationship between housing and recessions. And from every recession for, since 1960 till today, um, housing has continued to go up, obviously not skyrocketing through a recession, but continued to go up through every recession, except the recession in 2008, which was caused by housing, caused by the mortgage business. Um, you know, you needed a pulse and a heartbeat and you can go and buy five rentals with no money down, right? It was ludicrous. Um, and that I can tell you is not repeated and, you know, with Dodd Frank, with all the regulations and guidelines and any article you read, they don't, you know, refute this. Like, you know, a lot of headlines are what's different between 2008 and this time around. And the difference is people that should, that are in homes, qualified for homes and do qualify for homes, 
And all those people have a lot of equity right now, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of dollars, you know? So, you know, are we heading for a crash where people aren't going to make their payments and walk away from these homes with hundreds of thousands of dollars of equity? I don't see it happening. I mean, and then look at the fundamentals. Employment's at the lowest it has ever been, right? For Mm -hmm. a housing crash to happen, there has to be an oversupply of homes, which we're far from. Right. I mean, whitehouse.gov released an article stating it's going to take um, over the next decade to maybe get caught up. But home builders are building less homes now because they're afraid. So, you know, that housing shortage isn't isn't really uh, going to be cured or a housing crisis can be caused by mass unemployment, mass defaults, people unable to make the payments on their homes. Now, once again, keep in mind, these people have tons of equity. They have stupidly low rates that they've got in the last six to eight, 10 years, um, you know, and employment is super low. So, uh, you know, is there going to be a mass wave of defaults in most of the country? I don't think so. You know, in pocket areas, maybe. Um, and then I think the last thing I'll say kind of on this note, and I don't know how long I've been going on, but, um, you know, I, I get asked these questions all the time, too. So as you could tell, I, I make sure that um, I'm very well informed in all of this. But. You know, if you if you look overall at the real estate picture, once again, versus over any other investment, um, it still has, you know, proved to stand the test of time. And uh, we still are in a unique position where there's not many other places, uh, you know, to put your money. Um, so, you know, I'm I'm obviously still on real estate. I don't necessarily see, you know, a big crash um, uh, coming. Is there a correction coming yeah we're kind of experiencing it it's a mild correction right going down one percent nationally moving into next year is is not a huge correction um that that we're going to see and if history proves to repeat itself you know real estate is going to weather through this um recession that we're in um but it's an interesting recession too it's inflation driven it's not unemployment it's not strength of the economy you know it's it's inflation driven and you know, the Fed, once again, states, it's going to get more painful. They're trying to make it painful to combat the inflation. Yeah. Um, yeah. I agree. I agree. So with that in mind, I know we have a couple more episodes to discuss. And, you, uh, of course, you're going to uh, uh, expand on your your uh, continued knowledge uh, about what you just said. But having said that, as of today, I know things change a lot. What is the typical, someone with good credit, what is typical for homeowners 30-year fixed-rate mortgage approximately as of now, and also as a real estate investor with 25% down payment with uh, good credit, what is the investor's interest rate as, as we speak? Yeah, so that's a good question. Obviously, there's been a pretty sharp increase um, you know, just in the last 24 to 48 hours. With primary homes in general, you can obviously get into the low to mid sixes. Rental properties, you can still with points get into the high sixes. Um, but they are starting to creep to the low sevens. I'm going to price this scenario right now, actually, um, assuming 20%, excuse me, 25% down on a single family home. And we'll kind of see, you know, where they stand today. Um, you know, you keep hearing historically, they're still low. I mean, to me, they're not low. Historically, if you look at the last 15 years, we're at the highest point. So, I mean, it's nice to say, much lower than it was in the 1980s, but none of us even remember the 1980s. So, you know, setting the nonsense aside, um, you know, they are high. That being said, actually, not not actually as bad as I thought. So 25% down on a single family home, um, rental property, you can get around 6.6 with, you know, just a couple points. So still mid sixes, um, mid to you know not even high sixes yet for an investment property so that's that's obviously still great it's not quite as high i think as as many of us were thinking uh for a primary home today um you're we're looking at you know low sixes so you know they're high they're probably going to move up a little from here as well but they're not outlandish and then once you factor in that inflation per the government statistics once again, we all know it's nonsense, right? They wouldn't be panicking like they were if it was nine or ten percent, which is still nuts. It's really twenty percent, but let's say it's ten percent, right? Let's say the Fed's right. It's ten percent. Well, if you're taking a six and a half percent thirty-year fixed, 
you're still got a three and a half percent delta between the rate, the money you're getting and what inflation is. So, you know, it's, you look at it that way, it's cheap money. You know, it really is. Yep. I totally agree. Richard, my, my final question to you is uh, before we segue into a couple of other videos that we're going to do is I know you do not have a crystal ball, but, uh, but given what you understand about Jerome Powell, what he's doing, you know, to fight inflation and the federal reserve, uh, for the rest of this year, which is only three months away, fourth quarter 2022 and beyond 2023, what do you think the Fed is going to do with respect to interest rate? If they in raise the interest rate, mortgage interest rate to 7% or above, I mean, people are going to panic. I mean, does, the, does Jerome Powell understand the frail uh, uh, emotional, uh, uh, emotional aspects of most consumers? They, they, they freak out over every little thing. So... If if uh, if the Fed raised interest rates to seven percent or higher, I mean, people are gonna panic unnecessarily. So what what is your crystal ball telling you in the next three to months or a year? Ah, <laughs> uh, unfortunately, I probably see another increase. I mean, the Powell's very very aware of the pain that the increased rates are are causing and going to cause, and he's clearly stated that that pain is necessary to combat inflation which is more important than the pain that uh the increased rates are going to cause so i think he is going to increase rates again before the end of the year and you know that probably will affect mortgage rates now you know we're talking three quarters of a point up to you know and will that affect mortgage rates up to three quarters of a point i don't know that's yet to be seen um i can tell you is if you have been on the fence if you put yourself on the fence uh, for buying a rental property earlier this year and you're still on the fence, get off the fence before this next increase because, you know, at the moment you can still kind of make some cash flow on some of these good assets, you know, or get close to breaking even, but that's going to change. And if you have cash in the bank, uh, <laughs> you definitely need to do something, you know, and if you decide real estate's not the path, find somewhere to put that money other than a checking account or a CD because, you know, you're losing wealth versus creating wealth. And if you're going to lose wealth because the property's not making your 6% or 8% cash on cash, that's silly. Like get your emotions out of it. Look at the numbers and do something versus nothing. Because inactivity, normally we say, oh, well, you know, you didn't do anything for the last year and prices have gone up, um, which is true. It didn't cost you anything except not taking that opportunity and not standing that game. But now it actually costs you something. Right. Sitting on the sidelines, the low interest bearing account is costing you six, eight, 10 plus percent um, to, you know, be cautious. So know that going into that, you know, and we all know that, you know, if you had a hundred grand in January of this year, we all know that the buying power of that hundred grand is closer to 70 or 80. Go to the grocery store, go to the gas pump, get your car serviced, do anything. You know, I mean, buying roses on the side of the road is 20 bucks now. You know, it's it's nuts. You can't go um, to dinner with your family without spending north of $100 and not even at a fancy place. So, you know, heed what I'm saying about cash in the bank, you know, and also look at your real life examples in the last year and you will actually, you'll really settle in that. Oh my God, I got a hundred grand in the bank. It's worth 20 now. I'm excuse me, worth 80 now. Best case you know, the buying power of it. So um, yeah, don't get stuck in analysis paralysis. Don't wait to buy real estate, buy real estate and wait. Yeah, I, I, will, I will, very well said, I will conclude in the next 30 seconds, uh, giving the investor, if the investor are thinking, even with a 7% interest rate, 30 year mortgage rate or investment loan, 7%. By the way, my markets that I'm promoting, Buffalo, New York, throughout Alabama and Tennessee, and some parts of Texas, Central Texas, and many parts of Florida, my investors can still cash flow a little bit, albeit just a little bit, you know, $100, $200 cash flow with 25% down payment on a property, 100 grand, 250 grand, 300,000, even with 7% interest rate. So that is the expectation for investors buy real estate. Even at a higher rate right now, you can always refinance down the road for a lower rate. Uh, but at the end of the day, still a good time to invest for, for investors. So that's my takeaway. That's my parting thought. Let's 
dive into another video. All right. Thank you so much, Richard, for your great insight. As always, this is Siwing Yi. Thank you so much, Richard Evani. Thank you. Have a nice day. Bye-bye.